Hey guys and welcome back to the AC Milan career mode. Today we've got an outrageously important episode, not just because we've hit the January transfer window, we're also playing Juve twice in the league in today's episode and that's going to be the only two, actually no, change of plans. They changed a few things in the calendar, we've got a Bologna game in between and a round of 16 cup game against Sampdoria. I'll probably play the first Juve game, the Sampdoria game and then save everything else for future episodes. So two games and a bit of a transfer window action. You guys left comments and suggestions regarding what players I should sign. And when I asked you for right back suggestions, it was very, very clear. Alessandro Florenzi was the name that popped out the most. He's the only one that I've added to the list in terms of fullbacks, and he's gonna be the main target we're going for. Other than that, uh, there was a few other names in there, like Thiago, most notably. Don't look at my shortlist too much, it's still from previous windows, but Thiago and Florenzi are the two I added for this window. Let me know if you want me to sign Thiago or not. We've talked about him before. I'm not sure if we need a midfielder, but it's up to you. You guys can decide. I'll leave a straw poll vote on the top right-hand corner of your screen. If you want me to sign Thiago, then vote yes. If you don't want me to sign him because we've got a good midfield, then say no. But Florenzi is the one I'm going for in today's episode, uh, for sure. We need a right-back. 84 rated. Brilliant stats everywhere. He's only got strength below 70. Everything else is above that. What a player. Let's try and sign him. The chief executive says this is a rival, so we'll have to overpay to get the player... Which is no problem at all, as you can see by our budget, 100 million and a million in wages. Alessandro Florenzi will not be able to withstand our insane offer, and Roma even, for that matter, will not be able to uh, withstand. 35 million is the starting bid. You may have seen this in a previous episode, but when uh, Vergara came to me and spoke about his future, he was uncertain about what was best for him, so the board wants me to sell him pretty much, which is what we're going to do. We've got a transfer offer for Vergara. I don't know if going to Kievo is going to solve his homesick problem. Logic, right there. But I'm going to counter offer for 2.5 million and get him off our books. And Roma have accepted they're not even fighting to keep Alessandro Florenzi, which is good enough for me. We'll take him gladly. 100,000 a week is decent. Oh, he's got... Oh, if he joins before the Juve game, I'll be absolutely ecstatic, but I'm not counting on it. We've got two more days before the Juve clash, and as you can see, we're three points behind them. It's a huge game. We can go level on points with them and overtake them in the next game we play against them. Unfortunately, he's not going to join us, and by he, I mean Alessandro Florenzi, before the first Juve game we have. Atletico Bilbao giving in an offer for uh, Ale uh, Andrea Bertolacci, sorry, who... If we sign Thiago, may be surplus to requirements. So, if they're willing to give us 15 and a half, which is quite a lot, then I'm definitely going to have to sign Thiago. But Athletic Bilbao, it's up to them. Make no mistake about it, the transfer window is not what's most important in today's episode. It's this game. AC Milan started off their title defence really, really weak. At the start of the season, we struggled a lot. We couldn't get wins together and we dropped somewhere to mid-table. Since then, we have been on the rise and we've been climbing the table. And now today, we face the ultimate test. The current league leaders, Juventus, could see us go level on points if we beat them. But they could, they could go six points clear if they take us here, especially at the Juve Stadium. It's one hell of a task, but I'm up for it. Juve have won all their home games this season. That is a stat to be scary about. But someone has to take that record away from him. And it may as well be AC Milan. The Juventus lineup is looking like this. And NATO replacing the retired Gianluigi Buffon. Savage coming into the fence with Chiellini and Bonucci. No Barzagli to be found. Kedira, Pjanic, Marchisio, Cuadrado, Alexandro in the midfield. Dybala and Higuain up front. It's an incredibly strong side and we already knew that, of course. This is the side we're putting out there today. Milan, of course, rocking with their strongest possible team. The midfield is looking strong. The defence is perfect, although I would have preferred Florenzi to make his debut today, but it's not meant to be. Juve against Milan. The biggest clash of the season. Let's get it going. Alexandro bursting away from Davide Calabria. He's got Higuain arriving in the middle. We can't let him get the cross in. Donnarumma comfortable. Memphis playing a blind pass over the top in towards Belotti, who actually makes that one. It's Bonaventura who can line it up from range. Oh my god! Giacomo Bonaventura has done it again. Three episodes in a row. The man has scored insane long shot finesses. He's just done. The most beautiful one of them all against our biggest rivals. Juventus find themselves a goal down. 
after one hell of a hit from Giacomo Bonaventura. Nato reacts late, can't get near it, and the Rossoneri take a 1-0 lead after 22 minutes. Watch out, it's... Uh, oh, oh my god, Donnarumma denies... I think that was Giorgio Chiellini on his weak foot, of all people. Yes, it was, but Donnarumma was equal to it. Great save at the near post. It's a good ball, Higuain chests it down, and again, Donnarumma making... An excellent save. Sami Kadira picks it up. Sami Kadira shoots. It's 1-1. What a hit. What is it with Juve and shooting on their weak foot? Chiellini nearly beat Donnarumma. Kadira has done. On his left, no chance for Gianluigi. We should have cleared our lines better than that. Bonaventura clears it out, but not far enough. And look at that finish from Sami Kadira in off the post. And they're back on level terms. What a game this could prove to be. Bonaventura dispossessing uh, Higuain. We've got Memphis Depay trying to find space for a shot or a pass. We've gone in towards Bertolacci. Andrea Bertolacci, optimistic shot. Oh, it's gone in. Andrea Bertolacci gives Milan the lead again. It's 2-1 and the first half is not over yet. Three goals in one half of football. Juve as Milan. What a finish by Andrea Bertolacci. And I sincerely hope Athletic Bilbao reject our counter offer for Bertolacci. He has been fantastic. I don't see why Thiago would fit in the way he's been playing. What a goal. And we're back ahead. Three stunning goals in this game. This is a game to remember. There's no two ways about it. Juventus have been dominating the chances and the possession. The way we're 2-1 up is just because flashes of brilliance from individuals. Not because we're playing well, but because two players have taken on the team and just scored good goals and that's the reason why we're ahead and I want to keep it that way this could be a huge win boys Miralem Pjanic need to be careful Juventus have gone pretty much all out attack for the final few minutes of the game Donnarumma comfortable save Belotti should have won that header and flicked it on once again we're very poor on the counter attack they're leaving gaps in the fence we're not capitalizing off that we need to do better Davide Calabria now they're running forward there is the run there is the chance Promes is through on goal, he has to finish against Neto, Quincy Promes makes it 3-1 and that's game over. Juventus have been beaten for the first time this season at home by a very, very strong AC Milan side, a very clinical AC Milan side. This is a game that could shape the form of the Serie A season, Quincy with his eighth of the season. And that is the final whistle. The referees had enough. Famous, famous victory at the Juve Stadium. The away fans going mental. AC Milan, for the first time this season now, are joint top of the league. We only had four shots that game. We took three of them, which is clinical. Juve could not get many past Donnarumma, who had an excellent game, was beaten by a wonder strike. But other than that, he did really well for us. And this is an important victory. Let's move on to the transfer business now. We're back in the office. Let's take a look at the emails. One of them has to be Florenzi. If only he'd accepted a few hours earlier, he would have played that game. But regardless, the easiest and biggest signing of this season has been completed. 35 million from Roma, who have themselves gone in for Mattia Musaccio and have signed another defender. He's not a fullback, but I guess he's somewhat going to replace Florenzi, who's now signed and has arrived at the San Siro. Welcome, Alessandro. Uh, Bonaventura is out for three weeks. That's not what you want to see. That is a heavy blow to the team, but we have signed someone and that's probably going to take away the attention from injuries and just keep focusing on the big and good run we're on. We've won quite a few games in a row now, other than the one draw in the previous episode. Andrea Bertolacci counter-offer. Interestingly enough, it's below value and I don't think I want to let him go below value. It's just He's just been too good. He scored a crucial goal against Juve. I don't want... No, no. Liverpool can fuck off as well. I'm not sign, uh, I'm not selling him. Oh my days. Memphis Depay has received... Well, he, he hasn't received... I've received an offer for Memphis Depay for 49 million. That is insane. Manchester City have got a lot of money. 80 million is my counter offer. Gianluca Lapadula is absolutely loved at this club. I'm not letting him go. I know he's been playing as a backup, but still, when he comes on, he always has a good impact. Suso to Valencia. Oh, I know Suso's been fantastic in real life, but on this game, it's just not good enough. I'll reject because I know you guys love him. For the cup game against Sampdoria, Florenzi is making his debut, but not in his main position. He's filling in for Giacomo Bonaventura, who's now out injured. Florenzi can play in the midfield. It says it on his stats. So hopefully, he should be able to do a good job there. 
from that midfield position, I'm expecting a few things. He needs to get involved. He needs to show me how good he is on the ball. We're at the San Siro and we need to qualify for the next round. Everything has gone flawless so far. We've signed a player we wanted to sign with not too much hassle. We've beaten Juventus in their own stadium to go top of the league. And now we're facing off against Sampdoria in the Copa Nazionale. We need to make sure we don't slip up now. These are the other results. No shock so far, other than Roma maybe being defeated by Fiorentina. I don't see too many hassles there. Let's qualify. Let's beat these boys. Come on, Florenzi. I'm looking forward to your debut. And honestly, with Florenzi in the team, I'm not feeling the need to sign anyone. But like I said, vote top right if you want me to sign Thiago. Although I'd be happy to continue with the squad we have right now. Good move by Sampdoria. There's a chance here. There's a chance still and it's wide. Don't start in towards Florenzi in his favoured right wing position. Alessandro Florenzi trying to work the space. Trying to get a shot off. Alessandro Florenzi nearly scored an absolute screamer. Oh, we've got an injury. No, Memphis. Memphis, please, please, please. All right. We need to sign Thiago. Fuck the vote. There's no vote. We've got two injuries to some of our main midfielders. It's time to sign someone. And Thiago was the most popular choice without a doubt. So we're going to go for him most likely. Jesus Christ. What's up with these injuries, man? And by Niang, use that pace against Araujo, relatively fresh. Well, I say that, but he's not able to outpace anyone. We've got a man outside, it's Decilio. Decilio looking for the pass. Where are the options? There is Promes, into Niang. And by Niang, redeem yourself for these bad few months you've had. Denied by a fantastic save. Promes, running at them, trying to play the pass inside. Who's there? We've got Andrea Bertolacci in towards Alessandro Florenzi. Alessandro Florenzi! Yes! Goal on the debut for Alessandro Florenzi. Just before the end of the first half, he opens the score in what should be now a dream debut for the Italian right-back who's playing in midfield. A lovely finish. Finesse shot. Keeper nowhere near. Based on 45 minutes, we can say this transfer has been a success. We're going into the half, leading 1-0. Suso and Rugani coming on for the Vrij and Bertolacci. They're tired. They need some rest. Got a few runners there. We're waiting for the right pass. In towards Niang. That was the right pass. And Bayi Niang could rifle this across goal. But again, showcasing his poor form. That was awful. Not properly cleared by De Silio. There's a chance. Just about blocked. Well defended by AC Milan. And we come away with that one. Unharmed. And look at that, they've gone all out attack. We can capitalize. There we go. Andrea Bellotti brought down from behind. Referee, come on, man. That should be back pocket. But it's only going to be a yellow because. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, he's off. Down to 10 men. They go. Sampdoria and Carolinetti been sent off. Rightly so for that challenge. And that's the final whistle. AC Milan win thanks to a debut goal from Alessandro Florenzi. The only goal setting the two teams apart. The Rossoneri qualify for the next round of the cup. He's obviously very happy. I'm very happy with him. The fans will absolutely love him after today. And that means two wins against a relatively tough opposition. This time we deserve the win. We dominated unlike against Juve. But I'm happy with how it went today. Juve, Inter, Napoli all qualified. Only big shock is Roma being knocked out and potentially Lazio losing to Bologna on penalties. Other than that, we've expected these results. I'm very happy with how today has gone. Very perfect, other than the two injuries we've had. Hopefully in the next episode, when we face Juve for a second time to go on top of the league on our own, it'll go just as well. I'm hoping for that. But let's take a look at Memphis, the pie. Um... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Manchester City backed out due to injury. That is fair enough. He's out for four weeks, which isn't too long, technically, but maybe maybe it's time for Thiago. I don't know. Maybe I should have the vote. Uh, maybe I'll have the vote. Maybe not. We'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let's take a look at what the next episode has got in store for us. Bologna, Juve, and maybe Torino, depending. If there's a lot of transfer business, then I'm only going to play two games. If not, we'll play three games. I hope you enjoyed, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later.